Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we're looking at a dual CS508 semi, well actually it's an auto lift turntable. And the problem is it's not lifting. And let me show you what it's doing here. If we queue up a record and we let it do its thing and then it goes over to the end here. We can just see it sits here for all eternity. It never lifts, never does anything. So something in that mechanism is binding, and we need to take care of that, because everything else on the turntable works fine. So let's get the cover off and see what's going on here. Okay, so when you take the bottom cover off, this is what you're going to see. If you have problems with it turning on and off, check this point here. This bearing gets sticky. Uh, likewise, this pivot over here, which has to do with pushing in on the switch, which is inside the power box, uh, also gets sticky. That will also cause the same problem, so take care of that. And then inside the switch box here, there are three capacitors to change. You want to change them. You know why? Because they're these guys, these Rifa Explodomatic uh, film capacitors. There are three values. There's 0 .01, 0 .068, and 0 .33 and they fail. And when they fail, they short and they blow things up, so change them. But what we're focusing on here is this guy. This is the auto shutoff mechanism. Now this pivot here can get sticky and cause the problem, but more, what it is, is this guy over here. And he's supposed to come out and trip. Now if I unlatch the arm here, you can see that there's a bar attached to the arm that's supposed to come over and push on that to trigger. But what's happening here is, is that it's sticky. It's sticky and it's not triggering. <clears throat> and if we come around, you see that right there is the trip that's supposed to trigger the shutoff. Now what we also see on this is that it is bent upwards. Now, why is it bent upwards? I'll tell you why. Because somebody spun the platter counterclockwise while the arm was over in the pickup position. That's bad. So this will have to be straightened so that it properly interacts with the trip on the bottom of the platter interface. So let's first start by popping loose that clip and pulling this assembly off. We're gonna straighten that and we're going to clean and lube these two pieces and then put it back together and see if it works. Now after you pop the clip loose, you're going to have to very carefully remove the ball bearing and the guide, which I may need two hands for, but let's see if I can just do it with one first. Now be careful because the ball bearing inside of here is going to want to run away on you and you need to keep track of it. See, there it is. Don't lose that ball bearing. That is a big component in making this system work without binding. So I'm going to set that aside and I'll probably lose it later, but we'll see. And once you do that with the E-clip off, you should be able to lift up on this and it should come out as a singular unit. And you can see how badly bent that is. So hopefully when it straightens out, uh, it'll still function. That's one thing to worry about. Um, as far as cleaning and lubricating this, uh, there's a tiny little clip there in the center. If it'll focus on it, probably won't. Anybody? Here we go. So the tiny little E-clip has to be removed. So we'll remove that, clean all the old garbage out of there, and then I'll show you what to do to redamp it, because there has to be some sort of frictional coupling there for that to work right. But we'll get to that in just a moment. So let me get this clip off of here and I'll separate the two pieces. We'll try to straighten this and then I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so once you get the little clip off, note where that little pin is, and lift up on this. And you can see there, those dark spots, that's grease. Just the tiniest little bit of molly grease is gonna get cleaned off and put back in those places. And that is the coupling that couples the two plates together, because you can see it's on the little nubs there. It provides a frictional coupling. 
man, that's bent bad. So you also want to clean the center hub here that this top piece rotates on. That's what's sticky. That will also stop the trip. Now my hypothesis is, is that the owner of this thing spun it backwards while it was in the lead out groove because it wasn't picking up and it probably wasn't picking up because this was sticky. And when it finally did, it caught this and it bent it backwards. Bad juju. Regardless of model, don't ever spin it dual counterclockwise. You will break things. Um, other turntables have one-way clutches and things that prevent this. The duals do not and you will break things. Don't do that. So let me clean this off here. Let me see if I can reorient the camera so I have both hands. Now, I have no idea how long this angle is going to last because the frictional coupling on my camera mount is failing and I'm pretty sure it's going to cause an issue soon. So what I'm going to do first Let's see if we can zoom in on this a little bit so you can better see it. Let me move this a little bit so that we can get it in the frame here. Just a little bit better. And I'm going to take some 99% isopropyl. And we're just going to clean this piece off. I like how the... Uh, staining of the lubricant remains there so we're going to clean that i'm going to pull it off the bottom piece we're going to clean the bottom piece too clean the bottom of this and then i'm going to put a drop of zoom spout on here which is basically a detergent free turbine oil good stuff I recommend you get some MO98 Zoom Spout. I get all these questions. What oil are you using? Listen to the video, guys. All right, so that's how that goes. That's nice and free moving. And now we're going to clean off the opposing side here. And we'll straighten this part out. <clears throat> and I'm going to see if I can correct it. Without influencing it or fatiguing it too much. That's pretty close. Let's check it against a machinist rule. That's pretty good. Yeah, I would say that's flat enough to work. Okay. And let me go ahead and get some molly grease and then we'll put little dabs of molly grease on those points. And I'm just going to apply this. I'm actually using the butt end of a zip tie just to put the little dabs on here. There's one. Let's actually get it in the right spot. That would be helpful. There's two. Just a little dabs of it. And then we'll put this down on top here. Note the locking pin at all has to be in there. So one moves and the other moves along with it. You see how that works there? It's a frictional coupling. Okay, now the fun part is getting the clip back on there because <clears throat> I will tell you from experience that this is one of the hardest C clips to deal with. It is very small, it is very thin. I'm using a magnetized screwdriver to guide it into place. You can see it's just hanging off the tip of my screwdriver. That's the best way to apply it. And you see it's going to want to come with it. Now here's the scary part. And use hemostats. If you don't have some, buy some. Buy a set of hemostats if you're going to do this project. Trust me. 
because if you try to use needle nose or anything else this little clip is going to fly off into oblivion and you'll never ever find it again in fact i put my thumb on here to apply pressure while i squeeze with the hemostats because if you lose that e-ring there is nothing out there in mcmaster car or anything like that that will substitute for it it is extremely hard to get and so if you lose it you got to get another part, another one of these things to put in its place. But as you can see, it's held in place now. The frictional coupling's good. I'm going to clean this bearing here, the sleeve, again with the isopropyl. And we're just going to get in here and clean this thing. And we're going to clean the surface that it rides on. And again... I'm going to use a drop or two of the MO98. And we're going to set this in here. <clears throat> and this notch here has to line up with that. At least I think it does. Pretty sure it does. So we're going to push this down and get that into place. Come on tape this out of the way all right so that is in place there okay now let's see if I can find out where I put the clip that holds that piece on because I'm sure I've lost that by now so one moment while I find everything okay so we're gonna slide this clip back into place and again, with the hemostats here. Okay, now we need to reinstall the end of plate trip guide and ball bearing. And there it goes. <laughs> it's okay, I see where it went. All right, I put this in the wrong way. Magnetic tools are a must here. I'm supposed to put it... No, I had it right the first time. Okay, I'm just fumble fingers. And I have to put the cap over top of it. Am I doing this right? Is my brain not working today? No, I don't think it is. There we go. My brain's not working right today. Let's put that down in there. Make sure the little ball bearing is properly seated. And we're going to start to secure the screw. Now, I'm not going to tighten this down until I know with certainty that this ball bearing is seated in here. We're just barely going to start to get friction. And now I'm going to move this to ensure that it's seated right. You don't see the ball bearing roll to either side. We're good. It's in the little keeper. That's what we want. So now it's safe to say that I can secure that screw. All right, so we're good there. And now, if I activate the arm, you can see, now it catches because gravity. If I pull up on this a little bit, it doesn't catch. All right, so in theory, this should now work, but without actually testing it, we don't know. So let's uh, put the bottom back on loosely and check it, make sure that it picks up at the end. All right, so here's the magic test. It just tripped off. Well, that's not good. 
that suggests it's not resetting. All right, back inside we go. Okay, so it's true it's not resetting, and either one of two conditions exists when that happens. If it's not resetting, there's not there's supposed to be a spring here that pushes back on this. That's obviously not pushing back. Or the coupling between this is too... I want to say it's too stiff. I don't know. But anyways, uh, I think there's supposed to be something that pushes back on this to reset it. At least that was my thought. Maybe I'm mistaken. Or maybe there's something else here I'm missing. Let's pull this out one more time. Okay, so I think I discovered the issue here. The issue at hand is that this little gizmodroid sticking up is missing a piece. Uh, this is part of the reset spring, and it is supposed to interface with that little pocket just to the right of where the clip is, and its job is to push things back when it's uh, reset. And let me put it back into play here so you can see how it's supposed to interact. So I think there's supposed to be a secondary 90 degree with a little lip that fits into that pinhole to push back on this slightly to keep it reset after it's tripped. And it's not supposed to overcome this. So let me see if I can find the exploded diagram to confirm that. Okay, well according to that, it's actually, the spring looks correct. So maybe just the, I lost crap here, hold on. I hate this program. Now I gotta find what I was doing again. Uh, okay, so we're looking at part number 88 there, and it looks like that what I have is correct. So maybe it just got rotated, and it's not making contact with the uh, trip to reset it. So let's see if we can move that around a little bit. It looks like in order to do that, I'm gonna have to pull the uh, platter bearing out, and it's underneath there. So to remove the platter bearing, you have to take the belt off. And then there's a screw over here. I don't remember if you have to take it out. Nope, you just have to loosen it. And then this comes out. And then there's our little adjustment point there. It's already forced over there. Hmm. Let's see how that interacts with the bottom side all right so it needs to be more this way to push on the trip yep definitely more the other directions I'm not sure why that's all torculated there but let me see if I can find the appropriate tool to loosen this just a pinch and then let's move it over like this. Tighten this back down. And let's see how that. Yeah, it looks like it needs to be tweaked more like it should be over here. Maybe. Maybe it's bent. Maybe somebody messed it up because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be contacting that part make everybody dizzy yeah it's supposed to come over and push back against this so this is decidedly tweaked here I'm gonna try to bend it a little bit but it's spring metal so it probably isn't gonna want to do that Yeah, I'm going to need two hands. Hold on. Okay, so I might have tweaked it a little too much. Let's find out. If I put this back down in here. That's not how it's supposed to go. Not sure how that helps me. Oh, 
Okay, I see. So with this in the right position, let's move it into the right position here. So now you see that the little post is resting against the top piece here. And so when the platter comes around to strike it, the spring is supposed to push back on this and reset it. But how's, it, how's that going to work? Hmm. Oh, I see. Okay. So there it is. It's armed. And as it retracts, it resets it. Okay, so that should be good now. Let's try this again. Okay, moment of truth now. It's all reassembled. Let's see if it works correctly. Probably not. <laughs> oh, we. Okay, well, this time it looks like it might be my error because it's not even, it's too close to the trip at all times. So I need to check the reassembly of this thing. Okay, remember how I said my brain wasn't working today? So, stupid me, I completely ignore the pattern that I'm supposed to put back together here. And so I was looking at the little notch in the pin thinking, hey, that's where it's supposed to go. But in actuality, it's the exact opposite. So I was putting the trip at the wrong angle and it was triggering incorrectly. So let's put it back together the right way and let's see if I actually fixed it. Okay, so this I believe is the correct orientation. Let's put it in. Okay, this just makes so much more sense now because now the little return spring is properly pushing back on the mechanism to keep it reset. So that's good. And it probably could use a little tiny bit of a tweak there because remember it was in the other direction. So we're going to fix that now too. And uh, phew, wow, amazing. And we're going to fix this by putting the spring back where it was. Tightening it in place. We need two hands. All right, let's see if it passes the stupid test. Stays on, cues down. Lifts up. So this is a fine example of me being a cocky little crap and not uh, paying attention when I take stuff apart. So take pictures if you have to make notes because I was going by, well, not paying attention. And so I put the part literally in backwards and that's why it kept screwing up. But now that's reset. I should be able to repeat what I just did. Cue down, go to the end and lift up. So there we go. So it's a matter of taking it apart, cleaning and lubricating, redampening the two slides, and having your head and your ass wired together when you're putting it all back together. So anyways, hope you guys enjoy this video. More stuff to come.